you know, us as your partner in business and in life, we can't be like, well, you were wrong. And like, you got to move on. Right. So like, you got to support each other in that situation too. Yeah. You need to both learn from it and say, okay, here's what you could have done in that situation. And then we wouldn't be in this situation. (laughs) Okay, everybody. Welcome to the Make Trades Great Again podcast. I'm Eric Ani. We are joined by uh, Andy Mickelson and I are joined by our lovely wives, Heather, Ani, and Cheryl Mickelson. Uh, Thanks, guys, for joining us. Welcome to the podcast. (laughs) This isn't a video. You have to talk. Thanks for having us. It's so fun to hear from you and your ideas and having such a cool conversation last time. Uh, that I just, again, it's an honor to have you. So today the topic is, you ready? Drum roll. Well, that's not drum roll. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I don't know where, I don't know what button does what. Yeah, that's ready. Working with family. Would you suggest to people working with their spouses or their family or their close personal friends? Or would you say... I don't know. It's kind of a lot of work. Or what might you say to them if, you know, just based off of what you guys have learned by doing such as in working with your family or your spouse? Is that a good setup? Is that what we're going to talk about? Yeah. Again, thanks for, yeah, you can, <laughs> you can talk. You don't have to look at me and smile. So... Working with your spouse first or working with just family members in general? Yeah, okay, Starting spouse. a business with your partner? Yeah. How, how do we, what do we? Yeah, working, okay, working with your spouse. Yeah. Yay or nay? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a tough Depends to... on the day. Yeah, depends, yeah, depends yes. on the day. What would you say to somebody who might be talking about starting a business with their their uh, partner today? Like if you if they asked you for some advice. I think um, first they need to take a look at what sort of relationship they have outside of a business. You know, do they work as a team? You know, would they blend well? Would they bring out the best of each other or the or the worst (laughs) and the worst parts? Um, I don't know. It's it's hard. You have to be pretty strong together to start. Yeah. Or it can cause a riff between the two of you. Absolutely. I think the, uh, probably the biggest challenge that, that we have with it is that when there is trouble in the business, right? Like, or if there's a disagreement or a a misunderstanding in the business that it's hard to not take that to the dinner table or it's hard to not take that. Right. And, and sometimes it's, you know, it is, it, 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 it can be, it can be an issue and you have to be able to be, you have to be able to figure out how to get past that and be like, okay, you know what? Yep. We're right. You're right. I'm wrong. You're wrong. I'm right. Whatever. There's got to be a little bit of uh give and take on it and move past it. But if you can't do that, if you're like, if you're one of those relationships, that's like, screw you. I'm right. You're wrong. And that's the hard, hard stone. Then, well. Then you're not going to move on from that moment and it's not going to go well. It looked like you had something else to say. I don't, I just, I think what kind of personality do you have going into it? Like we've discussed before, Cheryl and I are more, you know, here's your list, type A, X, Y, and Z. And you guys are, oh, I'm working this. Oh, now I'm working on that. Okay, now I'm going back to this sometimes. And both are equally important. But if you can't work with somebody, if you're a type A and you can't work with a type B, or you're a type B and you cannot handle a type A, then you don't want to go into business with somebody like that. But if you're like, hey, you're good at this and I'm good at that, and together we're a great team, then I think it it's, it work, it's yeah. a good way to go. Is it hard to, is it hard to correct? Like, like when you're working with somebody and like, you know, they've made a mistake and whatever that mistake is, maybe it's important, big deal or not, but like, is it hard for one person to take kind of charges situation and just get things going in the right direction? Is that 
person kind of have to be the bad guy or is it the other person? Is it hard to manage and be managed that, you know what I'm saying? Like, where does that come into it? Somebody has to do it. Yeah. Like, somebody has to be the bad guy. Yeah. Somebody has to be the bad guy. Somebody kind of has to be the mom. It's typically me. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> And I do have you, when you have a, a type B personality, and I'm not that person. <laughs> you do have to. The other person sometimes does have to say, "Where are we at on this? Where are you at on that? Did you finish that? Oh no, you forgot. Okay, can you do that?" And then it it kind of makes you feel like the bad guy sometimes. But sometimes that other person needs that because they are all over the place and they are doing ten things at once and everybody's busy and they don't remember it and they're not good at remembering those things and you are. Mm-hmm. So as long as you both realize that, then it's not a problem. But if the other person is like, you're always on me, you're always telling me this, and they aren't realizing why you're doing it, yeah. and they're not getting the benefit out of it, they think you're just nagging them, Heather then it's going to cause a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're having the, the same, same conversation. Co- this is the same conversation we have all the time. Yeah. I, I think I think I mean from from my perspective of it, I and I told I don't one hundred percent don't discount or disagree with what you're saying. I think that there are times when it's like it's so much easier for me to be like I'm going to go to work. Yeah, and right? not deal and, with the paperwork and, and, my and work not deal be, with. I'm going to go headache. fix a faucet. I'm going to go install a toilet. I'm going to go put in a boiler. I'm going to go design a heating system. That stuff. You know what? I'm going to do that stuff all day long. Yeah. Eric's great at getting the things done and making the money. And I'm good at managing the money mm-hmm. and making it, you know, spread out in, in that side of things. And we realize that in each other, but I can see when you're young, like we, you know, we always didn't realize that in each other. And sometimes it would cause a fight. Like, why are you on me? I'm doing this. I worked hard all day. I don't want to sit down and do an invoice. I don't want to send an email. I, yeah. you know, it, until you realize why that person's doing it and that, okay, here's what you're good at and here's what I'm good at, and together we rock, then right. it can cause some problems. I mean, it's not always easy. There are some days I'm like, I, I think I hate you today, but I still love you. <laughs> and he probably hates me some days too. So, Wouldn't what? you say, though, since we've gotten the software that we've gotten, it's gotten easier because it's tracked better? Oh, I think bef- prior to that, the arguments were you forgot to do this, you forgot to because there was it was not tracked appropriately. Yes, I think having that tool, those tools, there are so many more helped. tools available in the software we're using now. You're right that that do help on the on the help me stay organized on the part that is the hardest for me, mm-hmm. and that that for me is like I say, like I just said, it's so much easier for me to walk out of the office and go to the shop and build something than it is for me to stay in the office and run my business, mm-hmm. right? To do my piece of the business. And oh, that, yeah. If I'm around the shop or I'm around home and I look out and I, <laughs> the lawn needs mowed, I'm like, oh, I'm going to go mow the lawn because it's that, f- like, it's easier. It's so easier. Than yeah. what I know is going to be like the rest of my evening getting caught up on invoices Following up on quotes that were sent last week, but yeah. I never heard back from anybody. Those kinds of things that are the day to day. I take the distraction. Oh, easy. Yeah, All the time. it's easy. And sometimes I even know I'm doing it, but it does, like you brought up, Heather, the, you know, one person might need to be the, you know, kind of crack that whip kind of a little bit, just reminding, you know, helping make the list, stay organized, keep on track. Uh, that's not even like necessarily a business running aspect. It doesn't have to be. It's just personalities, as you were pointing out. I can be asked to pick up milk on the way home, like when the kids were little, you know, like those things you were constantly running out of. I have to be asked while I'm on the way home, not at 7 o'clock in the morning. I promise you at 7.05, I already <laughs> forgot about it. Right. And I've even been pulling into the driveway, and I'm not making excuses for this. There's a lot of reasons why this happens. My brain is probably the biggest one of them. I'll pull into the driveway just having passed through town five miles ago, not remember even how I drove home, and just realizing as the garage door is going up is that I was supposed to pick up, you know, groceries or something like that. Yeah. Or my kid, you know. (laughs) (laughs) 
but yeah, I mean, in, in our situation, like it, like quite literally you were really just pointing out each one of us individually, like I'm that person needs to be looked after or make sure I'm just getting those details that are not really a high priority in my head yeah. taken care of. Yeah. I, there, they are. I mean, if, if I were left to my own devices, um, we wouldn't do near the amount of volume of work and it would be much harder for me to coordinate enough work to keep the crew busy. Yeah. Right. Because there's a lot of that. That's a, that's one of the parts. I mean, I, re, I, I'll say this, one of my favorite parts of where I'm, where we're at right now is going and meeting with customers and doing the estimate, like the walkthrough and like the listening and the meeting and the, here's your issues and this is what you want to fix. And that part's super cool. I love it. Uh-huh. Right. But it's that piece coming home or, you know, going, you know, walking out to the truck and making a few notes and like putting together a number for them. That part I'm like, eh. Whatever. So you put it off. So I That's put it where off. Cheryl comes in. Did you do your bids today? Yeah. Right. Did you do your bids today? Yeah. It, it's a regular conversation. You know, it's like, well, are you going to get one bid a day out? Right. Right. You know, and it's like, ah, yeah. All right. Yeah. I probably better, you know, we eat dinner and I eh, probably should go to the office for an hour. You know, probably should go to the office for two. I mean, what was it? Tuesday night, Monday night. I think I went in and I don't know what we got home. It was a late night to start with. It was hot. And we had dinner. No kids are at home, right? They're all doing summer things. And I don't think I came out of the office till 1030, you know, it's just like, well, it's just what it is. I felt good though. I mean, we got done. I was like, you know, I got some stuff done. That was nice. But do you procrastinate on stuff like that? Would you say that you do? Or do you think, I mean, do you know you're doing it? Um, Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes definitely do. Yeah. I, I know I'm doing it. So I would say sometimes it is. It is done with a benefit in, intended, and sometimes it's it, I procrastinate going, I, I need to think about how I'm going to do this, and then I go mow the lawn, or then I go you out to the it shop out, then to you don't 3D even print something, <laughs> right? No, I don't figure it out, but I'm like, I'm going to think about it for a minute, and then I squirrel and go do something that's not on my list. And then you're like, oh, wait, I need to think about that for a minute. So. Or, or I may not ever think about it again until she goes, hey, did you get that? Did you get Jimmy's bit out? We're talking about like, ADHD. <laughs> Andy and I are both like, yeah. I think so too. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like you've done this before. <laughs> yeah. Any any time you can think of, I mean, I don't need uh, you to tell the story, but like, have there been moments where you're like, was this a good idea or not? Like, honestly, like, I know we can always like joke and once but a week. There, is there times <laughs> once a week? <laughs> <laughs> you would think like, maybe this isn't for us. Like, would we be better off? Once a week. Once a week. <laughs> really? Depends on how many times I've been yelled at on the phone that day. Well, and, and Cheryl takes a, the beating of it, you know. Yeah, it's hard with the being the being the first. I'm gonna call it the first line of attack, really, from the customers. Sometimes it's not that I shouldn't say that it's not a line of attack. Uh, being the first person to con- connect with a customer in our business, right? Most in most cases, the customer isn't calling. Eh, I shouldn't say most. Many cases, the customer is not calling because they want to, right? Sure. Like it's they're calling because they're like, I have a problem, right? So they're maybe at a stressful point. They're whatever. They've been told maybe by somebody else that, hey, we can't get there. And then they call and get our busy schedule. And Cheryl tries to do, you know, the best, the you know, the best of her abilities to say, hey, yeah, we can fit you in the schedule. We can get you taken care of. And- I've I've sat across the desk and listened to some of these phone calls. And I'll tell you what, the customer that's ruthless, that wants to come and throw an attitude, you're not getting very far. This is not second grade and nobody's getting a participation award because what you're going to get is we're not interested. <laughs> or move to the bottom of the list. Yeah, or, not, or move to the bottom of the not on a list. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, it, and it, and it is, I mean, I have, I have no patience for it. I mean, in, in the, in, and I know that Cheryl's in the same boat, you know, because it's like, we don't, we're, we're busy, right? There's a lot going on. Um, there's a lot of things that we could go do. We could look at other projects, 
And if there's somebody that's going to be dramatic, I don't have time for it. I've I've heard Cheryl say, if you're going to be rude to me, you can call somebody else. Yeah. That's, yeah. You have to. You ha- you, there's times you have yeah. to, like, draw a line. But yeah. then you need your partner to back you up, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So we ta- we were just talking a lot about how you guys have to kind of keep track of us and support us so we can be successful. But we have to support you guys, too. Like, decisions have to be made. Sometimes they don't end up being the best decision, you know, after the fact. Like, right. you know, could we could, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty kind of mm-hmm. situation. <laughs> but, you know, us as your partner in business and in life, we can't be like, well, you were wrong. And, like, you got to move on, right? So, like, you got to support each other in that situation too yeah you need to both learn from it and say okay here's what you could have done in that situation and then we wouldn't be in this situation so next time maybe we discuss it before we do it or you know like we we do it we make a decision together not in the heat of the moment or not you know Mm -hmm. on the you know rush and things could turn out differently heck yeah absolutely I know I'm so lucky to know that when we're like, even if we're arguing about something and we're like really passionate, Neil, we're very passionate about it. Sometimes we think we're right and the other person's wrong or whatever to know that your partner is like, their goal is the same. You're just not seeing like, probably not hearing each other. Honestly, you're probably not hearing each other at the moment. You're just mad. But to know that the goal is the same, at least that like now you've got you've got that common bond, you might just right. have a difference in opinion at that moment. Or that you're both at least you're both passionate about the business, that you are both upset about something and you maybe both think you're right, but you at least both care enough to be at that point and like, no, this is what's best for us or this is what's best for right. the customer or this is what's best for the business. I mean, if you had one person that really like them, whatever you want to do and didn't really care, then you would feel like you're putting all the effort in. And why, if the other person isn't invested or doesn't acknowledge what you're doing as well? Yeah, I I think one of the things that we've found is is actually, you know, just just discussing like why certain components are so important and that seems to get us back on the same track and not um i don't know i guess it it helps open both of our minds to well how do we how do we need to shift our business operations to make sure that we're getting everything done um one of the things that we've done that Cheryl's been doing lately is scheduling t- different pieces of time for me like during the estimate where at one point we were doing like estimates on Thursdays, right? So we go do five or six estimates and move on. And then in in between those five or six estimates, I was, you know, helping the guys or tracking down parts or whatever. And then Friday was supposed to be an office day. Well, as soon as I hit the office, I'm not doing those estimates, right? There's always something else to do. And so now we've shifted that to on Thursday, you're going to have three estimates and maybe on Monday, you're going to have three estimates and now they're a two hour time block. And so hopefully in that two hour time block, that gives me time to get all of my logistics in row in order, maybe get some parts quoted, maybe find a piece of replacement equipment so that I can potentially send that quote to the customer that day instead of going, oh, I'll get it to you in two weeks. And then it doesn't show up in for four weeks because yeah. I got busy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got, right? well, hey, your lawn is always mowed. Isn't that nice? Uh, not always. I still get sidetracked <laughs> from that too. <laughs> so. What, what, it, what happens if the, the scheduling, you know, you're not following it? What happens when there is conflict? Like, what do you do to get through it? Like, what would you say? Okay, let me let me just walk that back all together. We kind of talked about that a little bit already. Your um, let's say your your neighbors are you know, newlyweds. One's a plumber. The two of them are like, we're gonna go into business. You guys are so successful. We love what you're doing. We want to do it ourselves. Like, but you know, and they and they do that, and then they're a few months into it, and they're like, you can hear. You can see the tension between the two of them. They're not getting along. Like, it's tough. Like, how do you, 
do you have something to say to them? Like you've been through those times where you're like, Heather, you just said it like some days I don't like them, you know, like, <laughs> but you see this young couple and what would you have to say if, if they ask for your advice, do you have anything to say to them? Communication is key. You have to talk to each other no. and work it out. Yeah. And that's <clears throat> like that community. You're right. That I mean, and sometimes it's hard to, it's, it's hard for me anyway, and I'm sure it's hard for other people, but it's hard for me to be like, I am not done with this. Or, you know, we talked about this schedule and I told you we could do it in three days and here we are on day four. We had to figure this out, you know, cause that's the last thing I want to do is be like, Hey, I mean, you remember that troublesome customer you had the last week that wanted to change the schedule around a whole bunch? Can I be it? You know, make your job harder. Right. Can I, yeah. Can I, can I ask you to redo everything you've been working on for the last three days? But does that cause trouble? Or would you say to this young couple who's not communicating, like, there's ways to get through this? Like, there, it's definitely, it's not, yeah, it's, this shouldn't be the end. It's not the end of the world. No. Yeah. No. But for, for, like, for us, it's, it's got to be one of those things where it's, where we've, I've, you know, at one point I was like, ah, I'm just going to be reluctant. We'll just, we'll just figure it out. Right. Well, then it, if something doesn't get communicated, like, I mean, a big one and it, and with, with the guys, it's, it, it brings a whole nother level of, um, I don't know what the word is, another level of, of intensity to it sometimes, because there's, you know, I've got, I've got parts that I need to order for my jobs. I've got parts that I've got to order for their jobs and maybe things I need to figure out. Like, is this under warranty? Is that not under warranty? Did we get the parts ordered? Are they going to be here in time? And if I don't do my part, which is figuring that out and putting it on the service call, she may look at the service call and go, oh, we've got to go back to Dan's. Okay. And, and, and you know, let's say that somebody wrote down, you know, it's going to be three hours what they need at Dan's. Okay. So they go, she puts it on the schedule and need three hours back at Dan's. She doesn't know that Dan's parts aren't going to be here for three weeks. Because you didn't communicate. Because I didn't put it on the call or I didn't communicate that. And and those are those little things that I, I say they're little things because ultimately they are little pieces of the puzzle that make a huge impact in in how everything operates. You know, how smoothly does it operate? Because if one of my guys is standing at the supply house and all the only thing I wrote on my note was ordered at Keller – and it doesn't say that they're going to be in in three weeks. Well, maybe I didn't even know they weren't going to be here for three weeks, right? Maybe one was back order. They couldn't find it. Well, the supply house never told me. We don't know. Sure. And that's a little tiny detail, right? I mean, that's not a big detail. But it's pretty big when you've got, you know, $300 an hour standing there waiting for parts. But, and a customer and gets it irritated. throws off the rest of your week's schedule. Oh, yeah. yeah but if you can't communicate and talk to each other. Right. Then it will never work. When well, yep. you can't assume the other person is thinking the same way that you are about it. So you have right. to say, well, I did this because I think this. Yeah. Because they might be thinking a completely, like, Eric and I don't think the same on, are you sure? on topics. Uh, also, I'm not, <laughs> a, very pl different I'm not people. a plumber. <laughs> exactly. Right. I know just yeah. enough to be dangerous most days yeah. when, I'm, when I'm scheduling. And... Having to guess, and I've gotten yeah. pretty good at it. You're pretty good at it. Guess You're how much a call, it. how long a call is going to take, or adjusting the guys if I didn't yeah. do it right. Or well, and that, and that's the thing, you know. I mean, when you have employees, it's it's hard it's hard to gauge, you know, is uh, how how much, not how much, not how much, how fast they are in the day. In certain days, depending on the first call of the day, depending on the last call of yesterday, depending on yeah, just in you know, general, the, the severity. You know, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, you may and, and depending on the service call, you may get a customer that's like, Oh yeah, I'll be home. And you know, the guy's like, Yeah, I'm on my way. And okay, sounds good. And then they show up at the house and they're like, I'll be there in 20 minutes. And you're like, Oh, okay, well, there's 20 minutes lost. They were gonna be there for two hours. Now they're gonna be out there for two hours and twenty minutes, bare minimum. Right. And then if things go a little longer or maybe it's not what the customer explained that it was. I mean, how many of those have we had recently where it's, you know, like, oh, I have this leak. Oh, it's leaking from your main shutoff valve before the valve. And you can't, there's a, 
25 year old oak tree on top of the shutoff valve outside. Right. You know, I mean, like you get, we just, we, it seems like some, some, some weeks we get more of those than not, than the ones that are like, I'll be, I'll be out of here in 10. If it was easy though, anybody would do it. Yeah. But to the young couple, they also have to learn to separate business and personal. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys have a hard time with that sometimes? Uh, I know one of us likes to talk about work more than the other <laughs> or like wants to continue one to talk about it. One of us likes to avoid work more than the other. Yeah, well. Yeah. He thinks the problem will just go away if we don't talk about it. <laughs> no, I'm shaking my head because you can't watch this on video, but <laughs> right. I know it'll never go away, but I also know it'll be there tomorrow. So like, yeah, we talk about it tomorrow. I can compartmentalize. But I'd rather get it over with and not have to worry about it again tomorrow. I think I think for us working in the field, it's really easy to look at something and be like, "No, we didn't get that done today. No big deal. It'll be here tomorrow." It might be kind of how we approach other things too. Problems sometimes. Yep. And when it comes to the schedule, that's not a very good approach because there's already something on tomorrow's schedule. You know, in a lot of cases. Sometimes it's not that way, but yeah. it's, it, you know, I mean, I like to say, deal them. If, if, if all of the customers were very rational and just, yep. Okay. Sounds good. Here's what I need. I can send you some pictures, you know, and it's, and it's no big deal. And there wasn't um pushback. Things would be more smooth than, oh, yes. I didn't know you wanted me to look at that. And, 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 and on that same note, I mean, there's times when the customers, I mean, I get it. They're, they're having a stressful moment. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think they're meaning to be rude. Well, we but. also have to remember that customers, like I, most of the time, don't know anything about plumbing. Don't. I don't know. I, people call me up and I know what a boiler is and what a furnace is. And I can't even tell you how many times I will send one of the guys and say, you're going to look at a furnace and they'll show up and it's a boiler. Yeah, yeah. that happens. It's that's, hard that's to, a, yeah. That's got to be so But when you send your HVAC guy and not your boiler guy. <laughs> no, no, I know. I'm just saying it happened. You're right. Then it's kind of a big deal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, let's shift gears. Less about what's happening with the customers, but more about like the uh, family thing. What about kids? Would you want your kids or your your little nephews or your your nieces or your, you know, the neighbor kid that you watch grow up, would you want them to come work for you in your business? Like, cause there's that closeness, right? Like there's obviously, it's not just somebody you're going to come off the street and hire. Like you kind of have a history with this person. You definitely have to be a person who can separate the two. Yeah. I don't know if I'm that person. I think you also need to make sure that they're that person that can separate the two. Yeah. Well, sometimes, you know, the younger, considering they might be younger, you Mm -hmm. know, it's kind of hard to know exactly that about their personality, but you're the business owner. You're the person maybe making the the decision. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's more important. You have to be able to do it, I guess, you know? Yep. Yeah. But, uh, but like, like Cheryl was saying too, I mean, they, they also have to understand that, Hey, it's business. Right, like it's not personal. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not irritated as you as a friend. I'm irritated that. You know, you screwed up and you're an employee and I got to be able to be, we have to be able to express that I am disappointed in your performance and I don't hate you. Yeah. <laughs> I think right? like, yeah, you know, and, and that can, that can, that can be a really tough thing. Cause I mean, you know what? I, well, we feel that way about our employees too. I mean, like not just if we know them personally, we don't yeah. want them to ever feel like. They're not valued. They're not yeah. valued if something happened. Right. You oh know. yeah, no. I, I've Don't screwed ever. some massive things up. Yeah, I mean, I'll be the first to admit it. I've screwed up major things, and and cost companies that I've worked for lots of money. You know, I and mean, it happens. And yeah, but did you break just... a black Kohler Memoirs toilet, <laughs> and then the next day break the black Kohler Memoirs pedestal? Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, similar, similar things, but yeah. not not no no black toilets. I think when you think about the family, and this this goes with the the spouse too. For me, when we started working together like this, I was more nervous that we were going to be spending so much time together that we would just get just it'd be easier to become aggravated or yeah. annoyed or whatever the word is. Like I don't want to sound like any of this is ne- we've had a negative experience right. we haven't, but you know what I mean, right? Like. 
you spend a lot of time together. Sometimes that time is stressful. We've already talked about that, yeah. you know, but sometimes it's not, sometimes it's enjoyable, but just a lot of time. And you can't, you know, like I can't get away from her in the sense that we, you know, when we're done working, we're, yeah, I mean, we're our eating office, dinner together. Yeah. We're eating dinner. <laughs> you can't perfect. go home Thank and you. be upset that Heather yeah, was I had a shitty day. Not nice that day about <laughs> right. invoicing. Yeah. And that's not really any different than if it's your kid, right? Right. Yeah. You know, in this, in the sense that you said you had to be able to separate the two, but you do have to separate the two, and you also have to realize, and and this is the hard part is I probably have higher expectations for Eric than I would if we had an employee. Right. I expect more from him. I shouldn't. I just do. And I feel like if one of our kids came and worked for us, I would they would probably feel like we expect more than we would if somebody off the street came and worked for us. And I, I don't know how we would separate that. Like if our kids wanted to do it, we would, we would figure it out. Yeah. We would figure it out and we would learn our path down that as well. But I do think that I would have more expectations like I do for Eric. I would for my own kid. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah. I mean, you don't try to. You just, what you be like, this is, you know, this is going to be yours someday and you need to care as much as I do. Right. You know, and they're like, I, I just want a job. I don't care. Yeah. Right. But it's hard because we have grown it from nothing to something. Yeah. 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 And we care so much about our business. Well, yeah. You want everybody to care that much about your business and it's hard to understand why they maybe don't. Yeah. Right. We've tried to get the boys into the business, and they just, like, they don't have interest in it. Our kids don't either. No. Yeah. But, you know, they have, their, okay. they have their own passions yeah. and their own, you know, things that we wouldn't want to do also. Oh, yeah. I mean, I can, I can say wholeheartedly, I mean, when I was my kid's age, well, not my daughter's, because when I was my daughter's age, this is what I was doing. Um, but, you know, like Dylan's age, I mean, he's 16 now. I... When I was 16, I had no intentions of doing skilled labor, right? I mean, like it wasn't even on the radar. Um, and I remember I remember having conversations with family members when I decided I was not doing school anymore. Not my parents or whatever, but with the couple of uncles that were pretty disappointed that I was not continuing school and, you know, wanted wanted better. And now I look back and go, no. Yeah. You know what? I yeah, I could have I could have stuck around with that. Um, I don't know where it would have led, but what you 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 maybe if you weren't happy learning about it, you won't be happy doing it for your yeah. career for forty years. Yeah, you got to be pretty passionate about it. Yeah, you got to be passionate about plumbing. <laughs> I am so not passionate about it. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever think, Heather, that you were going to have to be passionate about plumbing? No, I did not. No. I, I didn't really even think about owning our own business. Like we didn't really think about any of those things at first. We were young and one day he came home and was like, I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to be a plumbing apprentice. And I was like, all right, is that pay more or less? And he's like, at first less and then a lot more. And I was like, okay, we can deal with that. Yeah. Now look at me. <laughs> diamond medallion or yeah, diamond medallion. <laughs> well, you don't that. work for Delta, so that doesn't count yeah, in the plumbing world. Diamond medallion, though. <laughs> the cat's out of the bag now. Everybody yeah. from the PGA podcast right. knows my medallion it's, status. It's medallion been the joke status. of the weekend. It has been <laughs> yeah. bougie. The bougie yeah. plumber. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't even remember the conversation or if we had a conversation when I did I come home and tell you that. I was ready to start a business. I mean, what was the conversation? I don't remember. I don't either. It's I mean, been it, so long. I mean, we just had one kid, right? No, we had two. No, at that time we had. <laughs> it's just like we have two kids. No, no I don't. Children. Children. But Dylan was Dylan, Dylan was, was little. Dylan he was, was little. Two or three yeah, when we two. started. Two. Yeah. The D man. Yep. Yeah. But you know, I just I don't know. Like the communication piece is huge. And I, and I don't know, I don't know how you would communicate that to your kids, like how, how important, because it wouldn't, it wouldn't ever, if you were to give your kid or not give, sell whatever your business to your kids, they would never understand 
the efforts that you put into it to make it what it is until they put those same efforts in and recognize that, oh, this is how this works. And they would have a completely different business experience than you did because they got to start with something that somebody else built. They didn't have to start and hope it works out and build it to get to that point. Yeah. 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 They may have their own trials and tribulations for sure, though. Yeah. You know, because I mean, from the outside. Well, they'd have to maintain and keep it. Right. From from the outside, they may look at it and go, you know, they've been doing it wrong all this time. And maybe you have. (laughs) They come in and business triples and (laughs) like, we don't even have to go to the office. What are you talking about? It's funny you joke about that, that, though. I was actually going to say, well, their goal could be to to double it or make it much bigger. Yeah. You (laughs) gave them something to start with, but. Yeah. And they very well could because make it more different generations do things and think differently and they might have a better way. Yep. Yep. Well, who knows? Chat GPT is going to just do our jobs for us from this point on. Did mine earlier. (laughs) Chat GPT is changing out a water heater for me tomorrow. It's going to be cool. Can't wait. Well, okay, guys. That's all I got. I think it's been cool to talk about this subject. I think a lot of people uh, are doing what we're doing or thinking about it or, you know, maybe they've been doing it not as long. But there's a lot of husbands and wives or partners of whatever variety. They're living together. They're dealing with each other in one way or another to make this. I mean, a marriage is a lot like that, but we're literally talking like this is business. Like, Well, because you're already doing that for your marriage. You already have your, your trials and yeah. issues that come up in marriage. And so you're taking two personalities and trying to make one family. And then now you have that same thing going in a business sense. Mm-hmm. So now you're have multiple areas that you guys can have different yeah. conflicts or different opinions. And if your opinion is very strong, you might butt heads a lot. Yeah. I th- I think one thing that for us that's changed, and I, I assume Cheryl probably feels the same, is prior to her taking such a big role in the business, she was doing her own thing, right? Like eight to five doing her own thing, you know, and we didn't, we talked throughout the day occasionally wasn't, but it wasn't at the length that we were today. Mm-hmm. It was competitive table hockey. That's what she did. <laughs> yeah, she was competitive. Com- it was yeah. crazy. I, I see where you're going with that too, because when I was working full time outside of the business and yeah. helping with the business, it was different than I'm around all the time now. Mm-hmm. Right. And I have more time to think about some of the things while he's busy on the job. And then when he comes home, I'm like, oh, we got blah, 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 blah. And he's like, I just got home. I don't even know what you're talking about. Right. I need to, you know, yeah. decompress or whatever. And What's I'm your like, name? Who are you? Why are you in my house? <laughs> Stranger danger. Stranger what do you want? danger. <laughs> and so we've had to adjust to that too. Yeah. Like, and being around each other more often and, you can't just get pissed off and go away for a while. You just can go well, to another room, I guess. <laughs> but not even that. Like, I mean, I guess, you know, from the standpoint of when you guys were younger, I know we used to do it, is we would both end up at home, right? You know, it's the end of the day. And it was like, so. how was your day? You know, how was your day? All this happened. And, you know, you share this thing and you decompress and you unload. Mm. And I think one of the things that we – that I feel like sometimes we miss is that we both know exactly what happened all day long yeah. to both of us. Like, and there's nobody to complain to because <laughs> right? she Cheryl doesn't want to really hear it. hard on me today. <laughs> right. right. You know, so, it, there, and, and not, not that that like, uh, you know, but there, that was, that's one of those normal things that couples do, I think is decompress of how the day was. And when you work together, that's something you have to be able to do throughout the day. And, and be able to, at the end of the day, say, well, whatever. Yeah. You know. And then just think of something else outside of work. No. To... Um, this is how the end of the day goes. While we wrap this up, you guys. Yeah. This is how the end of the day goes. What do you want for dinner? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What do you want for dinner? I hate dinner. <laughs> Nightly conversation. I picked yesterday. You have to pick dinner. Yeah. One, two, three, not it. I'm not even hungry. You just get your own yeah. dinner. I don't feel like dinner. Yeah. Are we going to eat tonight? Yeah. <laughs> we just had what we had last night. I, honestly, if somebody else picked dinner for the rest of our lives, we'd we'd be a be lot happy. happier. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys. Thank you. Yep. Ladies, 
It's an honor to have you join us. And this is going to become a more regular thing. I got a feeling. You think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just, I know I'm, I'm taking it all in and none of it tells me that you're not having fun. Right. All right. Andy, how do they get a hold of us? What do they got to do next? Get us, get us at the email, uh, make trades great again at Gmail. Get us on IG, Mick underscore plum, Eric at mechanical hub and get Eric on Facebook. You can find me on Facebook, but I'm not there. Um, oh, wait, what? How, how are they going to find you if you're not there? Uh, don't look for them. Don't look for it. It's not active. Um, you can get us uh, on Spotify. You can leave us a good review right there. You, we appreciate your five stars, all that good stuff. Um, you can send us a text message through Spotify right down in the show notes. Click to send us a message and we'll see that. Yeah, that's cool. Um where else? Apple Pod, uh, Apple Heart Podcast. Radio, you YouTube. Get us on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. leave yeah. us a comment on YouTube. We appreciate that too. If you see me at Menards shopping in the eleven percent rebate sale, say hello. Say hello. If you see the mini yeah. truck driving around town, say hello. Okay, I think <laughs> we've exhausted all the times yeah. and ways in which people can get in touch with us. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, what Andy said. Till leave next us time. a review. Thanks. Bye. 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 I gotta go. Bye. Diarrhea. Stop. <laughs>